Hi, I'm Cody, W3AMG with BridgeCom Systems, and today we're going to be showing you how to install the CPS, or Customer Programming Software, onto your computer in order to program your Anytone radio. Okay, so first up, open up your computer. Uh, we're going to open up some kind of web browser. Once you're, you're there, you'll want to go to BridgeComSystems.com. And once you're on the BridgeCom website, you'll want to look for the Support tab. It'll be somewhere in this menu bar up here. Click on support. Once you're there, what you'll want to look for is your particular radio. This page may look different from time to time, but you're always going to have uh, a similar item here. So we're looking at product support. Here we go. Here is the 878 uh, version 2. That's what we have here. Uh, there's a 578. If we click on the see all button, it looks like we can see all more of that information. Uh, but we are looking for that version 2. So we'll click on that. And here it gives us the different options. Uh, I would always recommend the current version. Uh, that's what you should go with unless you specifically want a different version for some reason. Uh, keep in mind, uh, some of the CPS and firmware from other sources may not be tested, at least tested by BridgeCom. Everything we put up here, we test and make sure it appears to be working fine. Uh, so keep that in mind. If there's a newer version out, it doesn't necessarily mean you should update it. I would just go off of what's on the BridgeCom website. Awesome, so we've downloaded that. Save it to a place you can remember. I just put it on the desktop. It's going to come in a zip folder. All you have to do is just uh, right click on that and click extract all, or you can just double click on it as well. And once you're there, you can click extract all. Just extract. That'll take a, a minute or two here to extract everything. There you have it, perfect. So it opened it up there for you. Uh, at this point, you can just get rid of that zip folder. Uh, you won't need it anymore. So here is our folder. We'll move it out here so you can see it. Open that up. That's going to include all the different files. We have the firmware update, the CPS, everything we will need. So in this case, we want to install the CPS. So I'm going to double click on that and just click on the setup. Double click on that. Uh, now you'll want to click this more info button and then run anyway. And then just go ahead and hit yes. And select your language. And click next. Uh, this is important right here. It's going to try to install it on a D drive. A lot of computers don't have that or even if it does, it's not where you want to put that file. So what you'll want to do is click browse and switch that over to the C drive. C is in Charlie. Or you could just type it in there as well. Then continue. Next. Uh, you give it a name if you want to change it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is and create a desktop icon. And then just click next. After that, click install and it's going to install it for us. There we go. We're all ready to go now and you can just either launch it or finish without launching. So we'll go ahead and launch the CPS. There you have it. It's installed and ready to use.